glad that you are here, and uh, good morning. And, uh, you know, it's kind of depressing when you go into the store and you see back-to-school stuff already. It makes me feel like, oh, i got to go back. And I'm like, oh, thank goodness, I'm done. You know, that grade 12, three times, that was tough. So I'm just glad I'm out. And uh, it's, uh, it's definitely, it's in the air. You can feel the fall in the air. And uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's there. Well, we have had a wonderful summer. Uh, we had three student pastors that worked with us. The, the first that started back in May was Ben Rosborough. And this week he's at a church camp uh, somewhere, I think, in, in, in the valley here, helping at a church camp all this week. So he couldn't be with us today. But uh, Ben helped us out with getting the drop zone organized. And we had Patsy in uh, Young Life Canada helping students. Uh, kids were dropping in on Thursday, which was just great. We tidied that place up. And uh, hopefully we can get that going again when school starts and the volunteers will come. But uh, it was just great to kind of open that up and just get it re-going again. It was just so delightful to, to have that. And Ben did a lot of maintenance. He painted the offices. If you haven't been in our church office, just wander back there. Uh, there was just so much old stuff that we just kind of got rid of and old desks that were broken that just didn't make sense why we had them. But uh, it was just great having uh, him paint, and he's coming back in a week to finish off some of the stuff that we, we did. We kind of did some more work back there, but it just looks so much better and fresher, and uh, it, it's just it's great. Uh, the other two summer students that we had were Blessing and Ethan, and they joined us in July and will be completed here in August. And uh, working with these two guys was great. Uh, a lot of Mondays, we'd go for a burger, we'd just sit and chat. Uh, I got to tell you, these, these young guys are pretty smart. When they talk about their courses in engineering, um, it's just, you're like, wow, that's, that's what you guys are learning. I can kind of hook up my VCR to my TV, which is pretty good, I think. But you, when you talk about the complexity of what they are learning, um, no wonder they study so hard, because it is intense. And uh, I just got to appreciate knowing them. They did all kinds of odd jobs here at the church. Uh, ESL they helped out with. Uh, we did the, the kickoff back in May, Canada Day. Uh, it's been a busy summer. And so we have so appreciated these gentlemen helping, participating, uh, encouraging us. And it was just great. It was kind of fun. All the little offices back there were full of people working. And it, it just felt good to see that and appreciate Yvonne. She worked really hard with Julia. And we just had a great summer of just making the church better. And I don't know if you can tell, but there was things that were just driving me crazy when I got here. And so we kind of did some changes and they were good changes and it's a, it's a healthy place. But I want to invite uh, Ethan and Blessing to come and just share a couple of thoughts on their internship and uh, just so appreciate what they did. So I'll let Blessing go first. Go ahead, Blessing. Why don't you just share your thoughts? All right, well, the internship was fun and it was great to be a part of. And uh, um, I, myself, alongside Ethan, we, we were uh, specifically helping out with uh, you know, these, the, these activities that the church wanted us to do. And so when we think about uh, helping out with the kids, that was a really fun thing to be a part of. And so you know, I, myself, haven't really uh, done that before but uh it was great and uh you know a lot of the parents and uh you know for i myself i was thinking to my about my own like journey with delta church because we were immigrants and like how we got connected to the church was kind of similar and so you're able to kind of pass off that baton and like help out um you know new families to canada you know um get them familiarized and so that was great to be a part of and then also fix some of the things that uh, you know apply some of our engineering experience to you know fix some stuff around the church and yeah so that's great and the uh, infrastructure we got to, uh, to be a part of and i enjoyed it and so i appreciate it and then you know even learning some new stuff along the way website stuff and uh, yeah that was great uh yeah just to carry on on what blessing said yeah we did a lot of odd jobs um whether it be moving stuff around, disposing of anything that wasn't really necessary in the church, and uh, just like repainting a desk for one, which took a really long time. But <laughs> um, yeah, it was great to help out. Um, doing the ESL was a, it was a new experience for both uh, 
me as the teacher and also a blessing as a volunteer when it came to helping out with the uh, children and it was a great experience. It helped me out a lot when it came to teaching experience and uh, it helped both of us out. And we also had great volunteers to help with us. Uh, Petra was one of them, uh, Wanda, Hill, Nancy, they were the other ones. And yeah, it was just great helping out and doing a bunch of odd jobs and keeping busy this summer instead of lazing around. So <laughs> yeah, uh, and you know, it was also great having everyone's uh, prayers and blessings and just, uh, yeah, it was, it was a great experience. We're gonna pray for you guys. And uh, I have just so appreciated, you know, um, when students come, and I've worked with a ton of student pastors, um, some you're glad they come, and some you're glad they go. Uh, these gentlemen, all three that we had this summer, uh, were just a blessing to our church. I enjoyed working with them. Uh, they pitched in, not lazy, knew what to do, trustworthy, and uh, I appreciate, and I, I do want to say a word over them. Uh, for Ben, really entrepreneurial, really creative, and wants to work hard and do and serve, and just, just a young guy, but so willing, and I have so appreciated what Ben did. For Blessing, you are wise beyond your years. If, if I didn't see you and I was talking to you on the phone, I, would, I was thinking I'd be talking to a 50-year-old Bible college professor, honest to goodness. And just his insight in sharing books he's reading and what he sees about the church family and what God is doing. Uh, I got to learn about that in Alpha with you, and it's just been so rewarding, and so God bless you. And, and Ethan, I, I just saw you in the church. I really didn't know who you were. And um, when Yvonne said that you had applied, uh, I thought, well, let's, let's do it. And you were going to teach ESL. And I thought, well, he's just a young guy. He's going to teach ESL. Hope this works. I have to tell you this, and this is a word of prophecy over you. You have the gift of teaching. You really do. When he was up there teaching ESL, yeah, let's give him a hand. When he was teaching, I was like, I didn't know a pronoun did that. I'm like, oh, I should actually take this course. And, you know, adjectives. I'm like, he really excelled. And so I know you're into engineering, mechanical stuff, whatever that is. But you do have the gift of teaching. And whoever sits under you, you will teach them. They will learn. There's something about your enunciation and the way you bring it across. It was just cool to watch these guys in action. And so, you know, we've got a good future. And we so appreciate them. Uh, thank you so much, gentlemen. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you for Ben, Blessing, and Ethan. Fantastic young men. Godly men, guys that aren't perfect, but really want to do what's right and good and wholesome. And I just pray blessings upon them. I pray, God, that you'd prosper them, that you'd open doors for them. Lord, that you'd put them on the short list. Lord, that you'd get them those right places of ministry and career and witness. Lord, right people in their lives. Lord, people of, of, of wisdom, of influence. I pray that they'd find the right people to hang out with and friends with. And so, God, I just thank you for what you have given to us as a church family. And so we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you. You may be seated. If any of you want to intern next year, <laughs> maybe I'll be here and you can work with me. But uh, we, it was really good. It was a lot of fun. And um, we'll leave the office doors open. It's not quite done. But if you want after church, you can go inside. Uh, yeah, we had one of these pastor desks, like the desk for the pastor here is super huge, like, and really heavy. And so, uh, you know, we try to move it and it was really hard and it was this weird brown color, honey oak or something. And everything was going nice and white and bright and it just didn't blend. So we went online to learn how to paint and refinish a desk. Oh my goodness. We, we had dust flying everywhere and we had mats out and... We just kept putting paint on after coat after coat. There's more paint on that one desk than there is in that whole back office just to, just to cover it. But you know what? It, it, was, it was a good experience. And um, we actually didn't really use the office for the last six weeks. It's just too hot. So we kind of used Sunday school rooms downstairs just so that, you know, it, it would be a little bit cooler and we could function. But, yeah, it definitely was uh, a great, great 
uh, summer, and I'm hoping for a great September kickoff. Uh, we're just believing for life groups. We're believing that you're going to plug in. We're believing that God's going to give us more direction as we seek the direction of the church and new leadership. And so uh, God's not done with Delta, even though it kind of feels like, oh, what's, what's, what's going on? We're in just a season of waiting, and while we're waiting, we're working. And that's what God calls us to do. And so we're going to look at his word this morning. Another minor prophet we're going to look at, Zephaniah. So I'll give you a few minutes to go through your phone or Bible. Zephaniah chapter 3. We're going to look at this one verse, and we're going to talk about this verse, but then I'm going to give you a kind of a precursor of what, uh, what God is doing and saying through this gentleman. Zephaniah chapter 3. Even though these minor prophets... Uh, have only like three chapters, two chapters. Uh, their message is powerful. A lot of it is warnings. A lot of it is uh, reminders of God's power, of God's judgment. And so these, these gentlemen are quick and to the point. And sometimes to do the right thing, it doesn't need a, a whole lot of words. Uh, sometimes a few words can really change it. And these are the words that Zephaniah gives us today. And you've all used it. Wives, you've used it on your husbands. Parents, you've used it with your kids. Uh, friends, you've used it with other people. Uh, and these are the words. I told you so. Look at the person beside you and say, I told you so. It'll feel good. I told you so. Has that ever happened to you? Monique says it to me all the time. I told you so. I remember... Uh, Let's see, when was it? Yes, I remember. May 31st, 1993, around 5 o'clock in the afternoon. I was in my MPV motor minivan, license plate, MN1136. It's coming to me vaguely, the memories. It was about 30 degrees. No, it was a little cooler than that, maybe 25. In Saskatchewan, just outside Saskatoon, off Boychuck Drive. It's coming to me slowly. And I always took my two dogs, Oreo and Sam. They looked identical. They were like twins. They were as dumb as posts. But you know what? They were our dogs, and we loved them. But, you know, I hate walking dogs. Like, why walk when you have a car? So I would always go to this long gravel road, and I'd say, boys, and they'd get out, and they'd sniff around, do their thing, and I'd start driving, and they'd run behind the van. Do you see where this is going? So as, as we're, we're going along, uh, all of a sudden I heard this thud. Oh. And I stop, and sure enough, uh, there was my dog, Oreo. Hit the tire. My bad. Picked him up. The doctor says, we can rescue him, but you know what? It's best we put him down. So they put him down an hour later, and there I stood with egg on my face, feeling like an absolute fool. And Monique didn't have to say it, because she said it many times. Don't run the dogs behind the car. Dogs are dumb. They're going to they're gonna run. I told you so. Now, that was pretty tough, right? Learning experience. Foolish on my part. Thank God my daughter was born two days later, and we kind of forgot about the dogs and everything, and you know, a new child comes into the house. But that was an I told you so that I still can think of and taste and know exactly what she meant by that. Maybe you've got a few I told you so's. Don't drive fast, you'll, you'll get in an accident. If you keep speeding, you're going to get a ticket. If you don't study, you're going to fail. It's the I told you so's in life that make us either respond or reject. We either listen to the, yeah, I, I told you, or we go, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to do that. And I learned a tough lesson, and it, it kind of it kind of hangs on me because I always feel guilty. And I don't know, maybe I made it up by getting more pets and dogs and but it, it was a huge, dumb mistake that could have totally been avoided. That's the problem with Israel here today. 
And Zephaniah says, I told you so. He says, listen, you're not walking in the ways of God. You're not doing the things that are right and pleasing. And judgment is going to come. So in your Bible, Zephaniah chapter 3, uh, verse, uh, let's go with 15. It says, sorry, i got to bring this a little closer. The Lord has taken away those who hate you. The King of Israel, the Lord, is with you. You will not be afraid of trouble anymore. Now, these, this is the promise that he's giving to Israel. Do not be afraid, O Zion. Do not let your hands lose their strength. The Lord your God is with you, a powerful one, who wins the battle. He will have much joy over you. His love, he will give you new life. He will have joy over you with a loud singing. And these are the promises. I will gather those who have sorrow for the special days and take away their shame. At that time, I will punish all those who made it hard for you. I will save those who cannot walk and gather those who have been driven away. And I will turn their shame into praise. They will be known all over the earth. At that time, I will bring you home. At that time, I will gather you. I will make you known over all the earth. And all the nations will praise you when I return to you your riches before your eyes, says the Lord. The Lord says, I, I want you to know that you can turn to me. And when you turn to me, I will bring you home. I will gather you. I will deal with your enemies. I will watch over you. I will put you back into that place that I have promised. God says, listen, if you turn from these wicked ways, I will do great things for you. So what's this story? Zephaniah was a prophet in the king's court. Zephaniah was related to Hezekiah. Remember Hezekiah was told he was going to die, get his house in order, and he lays in bed and he turns to the wall and he says, Lord, don't take me. And the Lord says, I'll give you 15 more years. Zephaniah is related to Hezekiah, and so he's growing up in the king's court. And God gives him a message that says, listen, you need to go to King Josiah. And this little king was only like 8 or 10 years old, this new king. His father Manasseh was a horrible king. His father Manasseh for 55 years allowed the children of Israel to worship idols and to create idols and to live horrible lives. And so Manasseh was not a good king. And then God takes Manasseh out of the picture and brings in little Josiah. And this young boy had a heart for God. Well, in that kingdom, there was Zephaniah. And God says to Zephaniah, speak to the child. Tell the child, if they don't turn from their ways, if they don't clean it up, there will be consequences. And so young Josiah listens to the words of Zephaniah. And he cleans up Israel and he takes down the, the worshiping poles. He takes down the altars to other gods. He, he cleans up the, the worship that was a, a false worship to, to please themselves, not to, to God. And so Zephaniah was this warning siren of God's coming judgment. And young Josiah the king listens to it. And Zephaniah comes across. You read the, the first two chapters. I mean, he's got fire in his eyes. He's got fire in his voice. I mean, he is just raging with the condemnation. It was like the lightning and the thunder that we saw last night. He just comes in. He says, listen, it's going to be bad if you don't change. Zephaniah says, seek the Lord, all you humble of the earth who have carried out his ordinances. Seek righteousness, seek humility. Perhaps you will be hidden in the day of the Lord's anger. He's saying, listen, turn your, away from it because when God's anger comes, it is just going to be devastating. And so Zephaniah, his interest is bringing these people back to God. Zephaniah knew that the judgment of God was coming. My one commentator, Matthew Henry, he said this, Zephaniah's purpose was not to drive the people to despair, but to drive them to God and to their duty. Not to frighten them out of their wits, but to frighten them out of their sins. 
Haven't you been that person where you say to somebody, hey, listen, I'm warning you, not, not just to scare you, I'm warning you to help you, to make you healthy and whole. You watch the news, and I sit and watch the news, and I wonder how much of it is, is real, how much of it is fake, how much is it that controls us, And I say to myself, oh, this news segment is about a warning. There's a heat wave coming to BC. Oh, no, take shelter. We better hide. We broke three records in the Okanagan. Oh, that's true. You need to take water. Be, be careful. Don't go outside during the heat of the day. But the way that they're starting to warn us now, it's huge. It, it's, it's the kind of to put fear into us. And I'm not going on some weird tangent here about the government's control, although. <laughs> but the reality is, 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 is we get these warnings in the media. Oh man, is it gonna be bad? Oh, all these lightning strikes, are they gonna cause more fires? Is the whole province gonna burn? Like it, it, just, it just keeps coming at us. And so really, we are given warnings, why? To change, to prepare, to adjust. This, it's not just to, to scare us. They, they really want our best interest in mind, I hope. And so Zephaniah was there to warn the people. He was there to, to say, listen, I want to lead you to safety because the storm of God's wrath is coming. And yet the people didn't listen. Actually, in, in, in chapter 1, verses 1, 2, 3, the way that he speaks to, the, to God's people, it sounds like he's speaking to Noah again. Like, so great is a flood, so great is a torrent, so great will be the punishment. He says, I will utterly consume everything from the face of the land, says the Lord. That's pretty harsh. He says, those who worship the hosts of heavens on the housetops, those who worship and swear oaths by the Lord. He says, those people that are worshiping to be seen, those people that are worshiping for their own pleasure, those people that are worshiping other gods, I am going to consume them. It's wicked. I, I don't go to concerts. So I won't be going to Taylor Swift when she comes to Vancouver. If I win the tickets, I'm going to sell them for $3,000 each. And some kid can go with her mom and, and they can go be Swifties. Don't care. But the one or two concerts that I have been to, when I watch the people, because... I've been in church all my life. I've sat on the platform for worship services. You know, the first 15 years of my pastoral ministry, we, all the pastors sat on the platform like ducks, you know, like, we we're worshiping up there, and you guys are down here, and, you know, we watch the audience, they watch us, right? And so I went to a concert, and I forget what concert, I, I think it was Keith Urban in L.A. My daughter took us, so... He's a country guy, so I don't know anything about Keith Urban. Whatever, we're just going to do this family thing. And so I'm watching them worship. And he's singing his songs, which I didn't know. And people are like this. And I'm like, you look just like our worshipers in our church. Honest to God, they, they were singing, I don't know, some country love song. And they're just like, And I'm not, I'm not mocking the way people worship. But you've been in worship services, haven't you? And you've seen people like... And I was like, I guess worship is worship. You can worship that way in church and Hosanna Integrity's leading or... Hillsong United or whatever worship team, our worship team, and you could just be entering in and just, you know, hand on your chest, fist in the air, worshiping God. But you could transplant literally that position and that posture and that heart and pluck it into a Keith Urban concert or a Taylor Swift. 
And so when I watch online these kids at these Taylor Swift things, they're singing yeah, whatever her song is, and they're like, oh. And I thought, this is, this is what God saw, not in the posture and the positioning, but he saw the hearts of these people of Israel worshiping other gods. And I, I want you to know today that whatever you love, you'll worship. And for some reason, the children of Israel, they love the things of the other nations, of the Philistines, of the whatever group, Babylonians that were in charge, that were overtaking them. They loved what they saw, and so they just began to worship like them and worship their idols. And God says, I'm angry. My judgment is coming. And I, I say to us today, and th there's not an issue, but let me tell you, I've, I've been in church long enough, and I've been, you know, a pastor dealing with people's concerns about how worship is and what songs we're singing, and we don't sing hymns, and, you know, we, we, there's people running around, and it's too loud, and now we got lights, and some churches are having, like, smoke, and, you know, it just goes on. And whatever style and flavor your worship has in your church or what you like compared to what I like or what others like, that's not it. What God is looking for is a heart of worship to him. And, and let our worship be something that is so beautiful. I remember when I was in my little church in Winnipeg, we, we had some issues. We were trying to turn the corner. And so I was just young. I was pretty cool. I was like 28, and the church was like this, about this big. And we had a piano there, and we had the organ there. And, and Gord Condell played the organ. We had to always have that organ on. It felt like you were at a hockey game. I love you, Lord. And I'm like... Can you play it different so it doesn't sound like we're at a, you know, a game? And the piano player, well, you know, she was the district superintendent, the big boss of the province leader, his mom. She played the piano, so you couldn't take her apart. Otherwise, she'd tell her son, who's the big boss, and then I'd be in trouble. So I couldn't tell poor Elsie Peters, you know what, your, your playing is terrible. Can we play something newer, like that was written in 1900? And I remember us getting into it and trying to make the change. And I remember reading one, one author, he says, you know how you get rid of the organ out of your church? Sorry to say this, folks. You move it every Sunday one inch. <laughs> and I thought, that's pretty smart. And I did it. And was it better? Yeah. We got more people involved. We became a little bit more current. And yeah, people said, you know, I miss the old songs. And we do that today, too. But I can remember the, the pain of worship and, and the struggle. And I remember saying to people, folk, at the end of the day, it's not what's, what the song is. It's, it's how we sing it and it's to who we sing it. And I remember telling the pastor of the big church in Winnipeg there, Calvary Temple, Huge church, a couple thousand people. I was just like, oh, we just got this worship issue. My, the older people want it this way, but, I, you know, I'm young and cool. And, you know, I might get a tattoo one day. Like, I just, I just want songs that they're singing today. He says, interesting. He says, do you know how the people in, in our deaf congregation worship? Uh. He says, in our deaf congregation, they're mute. Some are. Some can speak but can't hear, but it's this group of people gathered together with a, a hearing or speaking disability. He says, so what the pastor does is he plays something really loud, but the bass is like at number 10. So it's just like, 
I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice. And I said, what? He says, they feel it. He says, some people just can't hear it. So the deeper the bass, the more it can engage them into worship. And I was like, what? You know, I never thought about that. I thought, you know, worship's only for people that can hear and sing. So deaf people can't? Well, of course they can. They just do it in their own way. And I remember talking to my church about that. I said, you know, we're fighting about this song and that song. I said, but th this little church does it this way. And at the end of the day, it's the heart that worships God. And so, folks, this morning, we need to understand that in our service to the Lord, we walk in diligence, we walk in humility, we walk in integrity. We, we do it not because his judgment awaits us, but we do it because we love him so much. And you and I are people that are people of worship. We are, we are there to worship him in spirit and in truth, in songs, and in, in hymns and songs and spiritual songs. And so I, I so appreciate that we don't have that, you know, boiling here. Some Sundays it's great. Some Sundays, ah, oh, the sound was off or the mic didn't work. It, it's, just, it's just human. But the responsibility that Zephaniah brought to young Josiah, he says, you're to humble yourself to God, you're to repent of your sins, and you're to seek his grace. And Zephaniah presented that choice to this young king. He says, God's grace awaits you. There is a risk of danger that is facing you. There is destruction that comes because the day of the Lord is coming. And so he listens to it. He listens to it. Gather yourself together, yes, gather together, O oh, undesirable nation, before the decree is issued or on the day it passes like chaff, before the Lord's fierce anger comes upon you, seek the Lord, all you meek of the earth, who will be upheld in his justice. Seek righteousness, seek humility. It may be that you will be hidden, that, so that you will be hidden in the day of the Lord's anger. God said, take down your idols and don't go to worship for your own pleasure, but worship me. You might say, uh, do people really worship for their own pleasure? Ask Moses. He's away, comes back, and the people are worshiping the golden calf. It's just chaos. Moses had only been gone a short time and, and because the shepherd was away, because the leader was gone, all of a sudden these people said, well, we need something else to worship and we need to worship our own stuff. And, and, and it, it is horrible what happened to that nation. And so the responsibility of Zephaniah and the responsibility of you and I is to hear the word of God and to say, worship me in spirit and in truth. And so the Lord says, I'll gather you. I'll save you. I'll deal with the afflicted. I will appoint them for praise. I will bring you back. I will, I will bring you, I will give you fame among the nations. I will return your captives and I will return again. So, so Zephaniah brings this message that says, if you change your ways with worship, if you change your heart's position in worship and get rid of these other gods and come back to me, I will bless you in so many Ways. So the Bible is a book that warns us and provides and guides. I love Proverbs. I, I read a proverb just about every day. I read a chapter of a proverb and I, I write them down and I take a screenshot in my phone and I'm like, ah, this is the one I'm living on today. This, this is what I hold today, and I just love the Proverbs. And here's some of the Proverbs that I kind of noted in my phone. The way of a fool seems right to him, but the wise man listens to advice. He who ignores discipline comes to poverty and shame, but whoever heeds correction is honored. Listen to the advice and accept instruction, and in the end, you will be wise. 
This is the one I got this week. Discretion will protect you. Understanding will guard you. Proverbs 2.11. And so I, I run that formula through the decisions I make. Discretion will protect. Lord, what does that mean to me today? Understanding will guard you. Okay, so if I stand too close to the edge of this cliff, understanding will guard you. Yeah, you know, I probably should just step back. If I run that yellow light, and it's yellow way back here, uh, probably halfway through there, I'll be, it'll be right. You know, understanding says break. Your neighbor's upset with you about a tree or something understanding and discretion will protect you from saying you know what you're the worst neighbor i've ever had and as a matter of fact i'm gonna throw all my garbage in your yard mm, that's not discretion discretion is, yeah you know you're right L let me look at it can i get back to you i appreciate that i want to be a good neighbor the scripture is so filled with wisdom and it's there for us to to lean on and to live through. And so the, the I told you's of Scripture, I told you so, they're there for you and I to grow and to be healthy and to prosper and to be better every day. I want to invite the worship team to come back. Can you guys come back? I love that song, Oh How He Loves Us. Um, I just felt like the, the congregation was just so engaged as we were singing that song. And as we worship the Lord, posture your heart. Maybe you raise your hands. Maybe you, you like to sit and worship or stand. But we're just going to sing this song because this is our, our anthem and our response to God. He wants us to worship him in spirit and truth. Amen? He wants us to come with a heart of worship. Not with an agenda. Not with an expectation of you better do this, God. But just with a heart to say, God, I'm here to worship you because I love you. Where would I be without you? And so that is what we want to respond to the Lord this morning. Let's stand together. Go ahead. And...
Father, let us worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, how do we know that you love us? That while we were yet sinners, you died for us. You died for our sin even before we were in our mother's womb. You died for our sin even before we committed it. So great is the love of our God. Lord, today let us respond in love, in positive words, in good actions, and fine deeds. Lord, thank you that we can learn from this Old Testament man. He spoke it to a boy to change a nation. Lord, he speaks it to us to change our hearts today. And so we give you thanks and praise, and God's people said amen.